But the fact of the matter is that there are these relationships between the constants of physics which seem to be necessary in order for us to be here. Necessary in order to have galaxies and stars and planets and chemistry. And, and to me that's indisputable. There are these fine tunings, but they're not explained by normal physics. And that's a real puzzle. Because if you, if you chose all your constants of physics randomly, life wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here asking questions about the universe. So the, the question is, how do you explain that? It's called the anthropic principle, by the way. Anthropos is the Greek word for man. Not sexist, I mean human, if you like. But it's a bad term because this is not really anything to do with humans in particular, but it's, that's the word we're stuck with. So the point is, how do you explain those fine tunings? And broadly, there are two different approaches. One is to say that there was a creator who tailor-made the universe for life. And so the God, if you like, designed the universe so we could arise. So obviously that's a theological perspective. Physicists don't like that because physicists don't want to bring God into it. Physics is trying to get rid of God and explain things in terms of natural law. But the other explanation, which even way back in 1979, I think we, we, we were aware of, is to say, well, actually, maybe there are just many universes, maybe millions of universes, in all of which the constants are different, maybe randomly distributed. That's called the multiverse. And then it's merely saying we have to be in one of the universes where the, you know, where the constants are appropriate for life. So that's saying fine-tuning is a natural result of the fact you've got lots of universes. So you seem to have a choice between God and one universe, or no God and millions of universes. Now, by and large, physicists prefer the, the multiverse because they don't want to invoke God. Now, but cosmologists are split about the multiverse too, because some people, just as some people thought God is too theological, some people think the multiverse is too, certainly too philosophical, because it's equally mysterious, because the point about the multiverse is there are all these other universes which you can't see. So is it science? If you can't see, how can it ever, if you can't prove they exist, how could it ever be regarded as science if I can't see something? Well, it's not quite as simple as that, because Physics is full of ideas, full of things which you can't see, but you still believe in. You can never see inside a black hole, but it's still physics. You can never see a quark, the subatomic particle, but it's, people still believe in quarks. So it's not true to say that something can't exist because you can't see it, because there are quite a lot of things which we believe in in physics, even though we can't see them. But it, it is certainly a, a, a philosophical issue as to whether we regard the multiverse as proper physics or, or philosophy. But it, it is, for me, in fact, the evidence for the multiverse is these fine tunings. Because I, I'm, I've written a book about the multiverse, universe or multiverse, so I'm a fan of the multiverse. That doesn't mean I did, don't believe in God, because actually I don't see why God can't exist as well as the universe. If, God, if you believe in God, if he can create one universe, he can create a multiverse as well. But the, the strange thing is I can write about the multiverse and publish articles about it in the journals of physics, and I can publish a book about it. And now it's relatively respectable. I mean, it was a taboo idea when we first wrote about it in 1979, but now it's relatively respectable. A lot of very famous physicists like the idea of the multiverse. People like uh, Stephen Hawking and Stephen Weinberg and, and mm. Lenny Susskind and, and Many famous physicists are very happy with the multiverse now. But, but the irony is that I regard the multiverse as just as speculative as anything I've said about models of psi and higher dimensions, but for sociological reasons. And in fact, the things I work on in physics, like black holes and time machines and the many worlds and quantum theory, are equally exotic and equally speculative. But somehow, I'm allowed to work on those things without getting into trouble. If I start talking about higher dimensional mind, I'll get into trouble. I can talk to you, but if I start talking to my physics friends, 
So it's an interesting sociological phenomenon.